Good morning and welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks. Uh, my name is Colleen Rumsey. I'm sure you can tell that I am not Pastor Daniel today. Uh, I'm so glad that you all have joined us here in the sanctuary or for anyone watching online. Uh, I was asked to lead the worship service today while Pastor Daniel is on vacation in Florida. Hopefully he's having nicer weather than we have had this week. I hope that you all take this time that we are about to spend together to listen to the music, the scripture, the message, and to recharge yourself for the week ahead. Uh, but first, we will have some announcements. Deb? Good morning, and welcome to all of you here in the sanctuary and those of you watching us on the live stream. I am Deb Rubenstein, and also assisting with the service this morning as Melissa DuPont and Andre Flynn. A very special welcome to Colleen Rumsey, the chair of our church council, for leading our service this morning. The flowers on the altar were given by Susie Callier in honor of Lucas Callier's birthday. In the coming weeks and months, there are many activities and events scheduled for our church and in our community. I will highlight a few, and the entire list can be found on the church website, in the bell, or on the printed sheets in the back of the sanctuary. Today, please join us for fellowship hour, for coffee hour and fellowship hall, sorry. The thrift sale is April 19th and 20th. Drop-off items starts today through Wednesday, and they need help with setting up tables after services today. The Echo team is collecting your used eclipse glasses. They will be sending these to children in Latin America in time for the August 2024 eclipse. There is a box on the table in the foyer. Next Sunday is Recycling Day. Bring your clean glass and styrofoam for recycling. And lastly, the Easter egg hunt that was scheduled for Palm Sunday has been rescheduled for next Sunday, April 21st. Our service will now begin with the choir in Troy. spirit and join me in the call to worship. Turn to Christ, who calls us here. Place your trust in God, who protects our lives. Lean into spirit as we worship in spirit and truth. Please join me in the opening hymn, For the Beauty of the Earth, page 92 in the United Methodist Hymnal, we will be singing verses 1 through 4. The words will be on the screen.
You may be seated. Good morning. Here's our opening prayer. Creator God, we give you thanks for the great abundance and nourishment that you provide us through creation and through your great love. As we come together to worship you, reveal us ways we can honor you and your created world. Reveal your presence in our midst and open our hearts and minds to receive your miraculous love. Strengthen our faith this day that we may go forth as witnesses of your miraculous love. God and community, holy and one, hear us as we pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
Thank you, choir. Now it is chocolate time, so please, any children, feel free to come on up. Miss Lauren is going to have our chocolate time today. Good. All right. So, what did I bring here today? Does anyone, who knows what this is? A mirror. a mirror, right? You don't get chocolate for knowing that. Sorry. Everybody should know that. Okay. So, in this mirror, when I hold it up and I look at myself, what do you think I see? Henrietta? Yourself. I see myself, right? What else do you think I see back there? Clara? I do. What do I see? Can you be specific? What do I see? The candles and the cross. You know what I see? I'm going to tell you. I see beautiful yellow and white flowers. I see a beautiful cross on the wall. All that stone. I see all those things when I look in the mirror. I'm going to give this to you, Henrietta, and I'm going to give this one to Grady. And I want you guys to tell me what you see when you look in there. What do you see? I see me, and I see a wall, and I see Ella and the kids. <laughs> what do you see when you look at yourself in there? What do you see? What do you see about I, yourself? Uh, I see me. What, what do you see about yourself most? How about your color of your hair? It's brown. Right. All right, Thomas, you take the mirror. What do you see, Thomas? You see yourself. What do you see about yourself? What do you see? What color is your hair? Blonde, yellow, yep. So is Henrietta and Thomas, do they look the same? No. no. Can you imagine if God created everybody to look exactly the same? Would that be like cool or would that be like way boring? What do you think? Boring, boring right? So God created all of us to look different and we're all beautiful. You might look the same, like if you have a twin, I guess you'd look the same, right? But do you think you'd still be exactly the same? No. Well, maybe. Who knows? You don't have the same name. Right? You wouldn't have the same name. So we all have some of the same parts on our bodies, but none of us look alike. We have some ways that each of us are different. When I look in the mirror at all of us together, so if I take our mirror, let me see, Grady, and I go this way, and I look at all of us together, I see so many different things. I don't see me at all. No? How about now? Can you see yourself now? I don't see me. Yeah. Oh, now if I hold it up, what else do I see? Who do you guys see behind you? You see everybody in church. You see the sun maybe peeking through the clouds. All those things are things that God's created differently, right? Okay. All right, so in my bag here, I brought some examples of things that God's created that I think are beautiful, and I want you guys to tell me what you think is beautiful about them, okay? So I'm going to hold up this. What do you think is beautiful about this, Joseph? Um, blonde. The color. The color, right? Colors are so beautiful. Maddie? It has nutrition. Nutrition. It's healthy. Emma? It's got a little sparkle to it. Okay. Gracie? It has a green on it. It's got green on it. Henrietta? It, it tastes good. It is good to me. It tastes good. Right. So this is something God created. Did you know that? Okay. Let's see what else I got in here. How about, let's see. Hold on. Let me open this one up. Yeah, you're right, Grady. Oh, hold on. Yep, everybody can get chocolate. Why don't you pass them around? All right. Wait, one second. Everybody's going to pass them around, and we can each take one. All right, tell me what this is. Tell me what this is. Catherine, what's this? A blueberry. And what's beautiful about this blueberry? 
Gracie? It's blue, and then when you like eat it, it kind of turns purple. Right, it's blue, and then it has some purple on the inside. James? Tastes good. Where, where do you grow these? Do we find, I know we buy them in the grocery store, but where do they come from before they go to the grocery store? Henrietta? It came from the forest and it grew. Right, they grew on a tree or a bush, right? Did God make that bush? He did, didn't he, right? All right, one more thing I've gotten here I want you guys to tell me about. How about these? What are these? Brayden, what are these? Flowers. What's beautiful about a flower? The color. Brady? Yeah, pink. The color pink, yep. And they smell bad. Oh, oh, what did you just say? And they smell bad. They smell bad. Do you guys think all flowers smell bad? No. No, they smell, they smell good. They smell good, right? Good. So just as God loves us, God also loves all of creation. God created it all to be together and working together. Each part is important in our whole world. So today, what we're going to do in class is we're going to go back, we're going to work with some fruit, and we're going to do an art project, and I have a special snack for you guys today. Candy? Candy is right there. All the candy you want. Sorry. Sorry, Caitlin. Yes. What do you want to say? Oh, Emma said that the flowers help animals, right? Because they do. Okay, so let's say our prayer. Everybody get into prayer mode and repeat after me, okay? God is love. God is beauty. God is hope. Thank you for the beauty of creation. Teach us to value every good part. Big or, small, big or small, that works together for us. Together for us. Amen. Amen. All right, go back to class. We got some fun things to do. Good job, guys. All right. Okay, we'll, we'll do this when we get back, okay? Thank you. Thank you. You can remain seated for the second hymn, and we will the, please join us in singing the second hymn, This is My Father's World, page 144 of the United Methodist Hymnal, and the words will be on the screen.
morning. Please join me in the reading of the prayer for illumination. Open our ears that we may hear your message. Teach us your truth and sow the seed of your eternal life-giving word within us that we may grow in love. Amen. Our reading today is from the Common English Bible, Psalms 4, one, verses 1 through 8. Answer me when I cry out, my righteous God. Set me free from my troubles. Have mercy on me. Listen to my prayer. How long, you people, will my reputation be insulted? How long will you continue to love what is worthless and go after lies? Sula knows this. The Lord takes personal care of the faithful. The Lord will hear me when I cry out to him. So be afraid and don't sin. Think hard about it in your bed and weep over it. Sula, bring righteous offerings and trust the Lord. Many people say, we can't find goodness anywhere. The light of your face has left us, Lord. But you have filled my heart with more joy than when there wheat and wine are everywhere. I will lie down and fall asleep in peace because you alone, Lord, let me live in safety. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Thank you. Good morning. This is the first time that I've done this, so I hope... Uh, you know, you get something out of today, and I hope it also goes well, too. <laughs> Psalm chapter 4, which uh, Melissa just read for us, that was the entire chapter. It's relatively short. However, it tells us that we need to rely on God during hard times. The chapter starts out with a cry to set us free from our troubles and to hear our prayers. This psalm is a psalm of David written during an especially hard time in his life. His son Absalom had started a rebellion and forced David to flee Jerusalem. Psalm chapters 3 and 4 are both traditionally tied to these events in David's life. He asks how long he must suffer, but he knows that God will hear his prayer when he cries out. He tells his men who have fled with him to be afraid and don't sin. The phrase, be afraid, has been translated differently in different versions of the Bible. It comes from the Hebrew word ragaz, which you can see on the screen. And I did have to look up the pronunciation. Which means to be agitated, quiver, quake, to be excited, to tremble, to be perturbed. Next slide. Here you see different translations of the Bible that kind of that take that word and then it says slightly different things. So what we heard today was so be afraid and don't sin. Think hard upon it. Think hard about it in your bed and weep over it. That was from the Common English Bible. Next uh, we have uh, the King James Version, which is stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your heart upon your bed and be still. Uh, next one is the New International Bible. It is tremble and do not sin. When you are in your beds, search your hearts and be silent. And then last, I kind of like this one. It was a little bit different. Um, don't sin by letting anger control you. Think about it overnight and remain silent. That one was from the New Living Translation. These uh, different translations all took the same word, regaz, and kind of made it into different things, uh, took different meanings of that word. But the message underneath them is all the same. Don't let anger or your other, other negative emotions lead you to sin. The verse seems to recognize that anger itself isn't a sin but what we could do with it might be. David urged, could have urged his men at this time to be angry because they were forced from their homes. They had to flee, and then they had to fight to reclaim his kingdom. Instead, he urged them to acknowledge their anger, deal with it, and then let it go. Paul, in the book of Ephesians, 
used this verse from Psalms chapter 4, verse 4, to remind the Ephesians how to live in their new life with Christ. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26 says, Be angry without sinning. Don't let the sun set upon your anger. Whenever I hear this verse, I think of a book that was made into a play and lots of movies um, just, and TV miniseries. Does anybody know what movie or book I'm talking about? Where this comes from? Well, the, a character in the movie quotes this line. Okay, wow. Um, next slide. It's uh, Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. Uh, it's a wonderful book. It's made into a movie several times. Um, there's two silent versions. The one on the top there is the one that starred Katherine Hepburn as Joe, and that was from 1933. And then the other one on the bottom there is the one from, uh, from that starred June Allison as Joe, and that was from 1949. And also uh, Elizabeth Taylor was in that one as uh, Amy. My grandmother, I know I'm sitting here today, so she'll know. My grandma loved old movies, so I've actually seen, well, I've seen all four of the ones I'm going to tell you about in a minute, but I have seen these two. Uh, next slide. The next two um, are f more recent remakes. Uh, this one is from, with a, this one right here is from 1994, and that had Winona, Winona Ryder as Joe. I love that version. Susan Sarandon played Marmee. It was great. And then the, more, the really recent one is in the top there. That one is from 2019, directed by Greta Gerwig, who also directed Barbie, and that starred Saoirse Ronan as Joe. So the reason I'm telling you about this is because I want to set the stage for, for what happened that, where Marmee told Joe this. Amy, the youngest sister, is angry that she's left out from seeing a play. She retaliates by burning Joe's book, her most prized possession, what she's been writing for years. Joe pledges to never forgive her. Marmee then urges Joe to forgive by saying, my dear, don't let the sun go down upon your anger. Forgive each other, help each other, and begin again tomorrow. Joe doesn't listen to her mother and pledges to never forgive Amy. Joe is so angry that when Amy tags along after her, to, they go skating the next day, Amy tags along, she's ignoring her, and uh, while she's trying to beg her forgiveness. At this point, the book says, Joe cherished her anger. Amy doesn't hear the warning about the thin ice. She falls through into the icy river and almost dies, but they pull her out. Once Amy is safe, Joe sees how her anger that she carried with her almost cost her something more precious than the book that she lost. Um, I think, well, besides liking old movies, I also think I connect to this movie because for those of you who don't know, I am Joe <laughs> in this age order. I am number two of four daughters. So I, I know exactly how Joe felt at that moment to have her little sister spoil something or ruin something or annoy her. I think we all can relate to that feeling. Through what happened to Joe and Amy, we can see how ignoring what we are called to do, letting go of our anger and not letting it lead us to wrong can lead to consequences. What Paul is saying to us in Ephesians what Psalm chapter 4 is saying to us is so incredibly hard to do. To let go of your anger when it is right there with you. When you know you are right or have been wronged by somebody. Not letting your anger or fear or whatever emotion it is lead you to make the wrong choice is so difficult. David, in the Psalm, is telling us to put our trust in the Lord even when things are terrible when we are being insulted or called names, even when we can't see the light of God. Later in Ephesians chapter 4, Paul reminds us to be kind, compassionate, and forgiving to each other in the same way God forgave us in Christ. It has only been two weeks since Easter, I think, yes. 
since we celebrated Jesus' resurrection and the everlasting life that was given to us. Easter and Christmas, they're both wonderful celebrations of his birth and his resurrection, and they all fill us with such joy. As we move away from these, you know, short, joyful moments, and we're in our everyday lives, we face insults, negativity, conflict, uncertainty in the world. We all feel, at those times, we feel like the light of the Lord has left us. But at the same time, we are reminded to not let these things drive us to sin. Easter gives us the reassurance from the Lord that he is with us that we should be compassionate and forgive. That, as the psalm tells us, we should fall asleep at night in peace because, our, because we put our faith in God and he will keep us safe. As Marmee says, we should forgive each other, help each other, and begin again tomorrow. Please join me in prayer. O oh God of righteousness, Come and listen to our cries. Bind up our brokenness as we seek to fully experience the light of your face. Fill our hearts with your resurrection joy as we put our trust and hope in you alone. Amen. And now it is time to offer our gifts to God and enjoy the music that Chimets have prepared for us. You can give online by going to the church website or by using the QR code on the screen, and it's on a green slip in the pews. Uh, you can also mail a check to church, and the ushers will be passing the plates.
please join me in the, in the prayer of thanksgiving and dedication, which is found in your bulletin or on the screen. Generous God of love and grace, bless these gifts with your abundant love and your life-giving grace. Bless us as we bear witness to your love and grace in all the ways we say, in all that we give, in all that we do. Amen. We have come to the time in our service for sharing our prayers and our joys. Today we hold in prayer Eamon, David Diedrich, who is having surgery on Tuesday, Pam Martin, Scott Howard, nephew of Claudia Emmerich, Priscilla McCoyne's sister in law, Deb, the family of Ken Scott on his passing. Dustin, brother-in-law of David Nadu, the McLaughlin's friend Drew on the passing of his grandson, Ryan Ledrick, Paul and Diane Becker, and John Hill, a friend of Claudia Emmerich. Please remember them in your prayers this week. We also have some joys to share. Many thanks to Colleen Rumsey. I think she did a great job have her back again. <laughs> the Adopt-A-Highway team is celebrating their 13th year of participation in the program. So thank you for all who participate in that. And yes, Pastor Daniel continues his vacation and he will return on April 17th. Upcoming birthdays this week, we celebrate Lucas Collier on the 18th and Dottie Young on the 20th. Thank you, Deb. Please join me in the pastoral prayer. Our Good Shepherd, thank you for the way you have led us to green pastures and still water. You've shown us many things that have fed our souls. The brilliant green of the budding trees glowing in the morning sun. The delicate symphony the birds sing each morning the caress of the warm sun on our upraised cheeks, the fragrance of lilac in the evening. Some of us have walked through dark valleys this week, and all of us know someone in a dark valley, valleys of sickness, grief, uncertainty, or fear. We meet us there in the darkness. You protect us. Our enemies are present in our lives, forces that would take us away from you. Pride, envy, hatred, and selfishness all play out on an individual and corporate level. We need your help in our lives. You have heard the concerns of our hearts that were spoken during our sharing time today, and you have heard the concerns that were unspoken, which weigh too heavily for us to share them. We call on your help. You guide us carefully. Open our heart to feel the, your healing presence. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please rise in body or spirit and join in singing the closing hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness. It's found on page 140 in the United Methodist Hymnal. Uh, the words will be on the screen.
planting the seed of a new of new life within you jesus walks beside you guiding your steps the spirit god's gift is yours forever amen go in peace Thank you.